Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mint flips, where I'm a full-time eBay reseller and every 100 subscribers there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe so you have a chance to win. Hello everybody, future Drew here, just popping in to wish a very happy birthday to a special viewer, Jewel. Happy birthday. I hope it is the best. I know it was a couple days ago, but my videos are delayed. This is the best I could do for you. So happy birthday. I have 20 orders from over the weekend, but I'm only going to pull about 16 of them and get, I think it's 16 um, shipped out today because today is Monday. None of them have to be out till tomorrow. And then the few that don't have to be out till Wednesday, I'll pull with my other Wednesday orders just so I don't get overwhelmed. Lots of other stuff taken care of. Did take a week off from filming. You will have, if I didn't tell you, you would have no idea. But I like transparency on the channel. So that's why I'm telling you. Jen was sick for a few days. We had Halloween. So those videos would have been bad anyways because the week after Halloween, sales tend to dip off for a little bit. It's just, you know, you... you there's a build up to a holiday, and then after that, there's like a lull. People had bought a bunch of stuff, costumes, candy, celebrations, all that kind of stuff. There's usually after, right after a holiday, for a few days at least, there's a lull. At least Halloween. The after Christmas to New Year's area is actually really good for sales, because people are home or people are home from college, or people are on vacation, or people are sitting around bored and they get on their phone and they buy stuff. But the videos would have been bad anyways because after Halloween there's a dip, and because of Halloween and Jen being sick, we weren't listing basically at all. I was having to take care of the house. So it would have just made not made for good content anyways. So here we are now, just catching you up. First thing going out, A1 is a Revereware six inch replacement lid, A1. I think it's this one, I'm pretty sure, but I'll double check when I go to ship it out. I also, because YouTube updated how their algorithm works and how monetization works, where shorts can actually make you money, and you know I'm in the business of making money, it used to be shorts would like hurt your, uh, your metrics. YouTube jargon, blah, 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 stuff that not everybody needs to care about. The point of this is I put out my first short today. I'm just going to go through my backlog of videos and every day there's not a normal video. So how it's been going Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday is how I've been doing it for a while now. Every day there's not a regular video. I'm going to put a short out or at least I'm going to try to. I figure why not? YouTube tells me I should be doing it. I'm going to do it. That's that's how that breaks down. A Four is a Micro Machines Star Wars Battle Droid. A, one, two, three, four. Well, I don't think it's on A4, but it's very easy to spot. So let me just back up. Maybe have to throw my glasses on, but should not be hard to find. All right, so over here on B4. Kind of tucked in here a bit. Let me finagle some things and not drop anything. That would be great. All right. It is this right here, which is a droid head from probably Attack of the Clones. I don't know if that's vintage or not. Let's see what the listing says. Micro Machine, Star Wars, Battle Droid, Trade, Federation, Ship, uh, only. <laughs> Had to open it to get the rest of that word. Thirty-one forty-nine plus shipping. Also, that's through the global shipping program. So let's go ahead and see where that's going, because that's fun for me. And I don't know if I said the lid, $8.99 free shipping. It's going to the Netherlands. That's cool. I don't know if I've shipped there before. Not that I'm aware of, but heading off to the Netherlands. I got that one in a Mikhail mystery box. So paid very little, you know, probably those boxes usually works out to less than a dollar an item. So that one's actually pretty good. It came with some other Star Wars stuff. One was like a little calm that you put little things in and it said different voice had different voices. That's still for sale though. Did not sell. And then speaking of Mikhail mystery boxes, I actually, I did get two more that came in. Uh, this is one right here. Because of the delay, I wasn't able to film and we needed stuff. So Jen just opened it. I said, don't wait on me. The business comes first always. YouTube second. So open it up list the stuff, go like that. There was a glass in there and I think it was full of buttons, pins, something like that. And Jen cut herself on it, which was a bummer. It's been good getting these boxes for my peace of mind shipping a little bit. 
I put my glasses on to, to find the thing because I couldn't find it. it. Took me five minutes. But yeah, my peace of mind when I'm shipping stuff because these big boxes full of stuff, some stuff breakable, including glass things, you know, just breakable items in general, all just been packed into a box. No bubble wrap, no packing paper, no nothing. Just packed tight in the box. And that's the first time there's been an issue of any kind at all. And also, you know, when you order something from Amazon, it's it's ludicrous how they pack and stuff. They just chuck things in whatever box fits the item, which, come on, not really. Like one time when I ordered this, this ring light right here, that came in a box that was up to my nose. Inside that box was another box that actually contained the item that was half the size that they could have just put a label on and sent to me and it would have made it fine. It's, it's really crazy how that happens, but it kind of, it's reaffirmed that I may have been overpacking a little bit. Not saying I'm not going to. I just, now when I pack something and put some a little bit of bubble wrap on it and so on and so forth, I don't have any, I have much less to zero worry when it's out there in the world getting to where it's going. I used to put bubble wrap on things that really didn't need to and stuff like this has allowed me to scale back. But my advice would be always overdo it and then slowly scale back as you get used to it, as you get comfortable, as you are more sure in how you're packing things. Okay, next thing going out. C2 is Fisher Price Hasbro Imagine Next C2. Uh, they're like little action figures. There's some DC and I think Marvel also mixed in here together. Uh, I see a lot of DC, DC, yeah, Marvel. DC and Marvel action figures, little toys right there. Those also came in a Mikado mystery box. $28 free shipping for that lot right there. Next thing going out, car 21. It's a lot of three cars. And that was a system I used when I listed my own car collection, my personal car collection a while back. And a good chunk of them, here we go, car 21. Good chunk of them sold through immediately, including a couple red lines that I had in there. And then now every once in a while they trickle through. That one right there, $11.99 for the three of them, a Corvette, a Morgan Plus, and something else that can't fit in the title screen. Next thing going out, B3C is in a uh, Cricut H2O wireless cellular phone. B3C, I think it's in this bag, it is. It says phone right here with the charger, outdated phone. It's so weird that these kinds of things sell. But like I said before, my dad is the reason I, I believe things like that would sell without any doubt because he found a phone he likes and then just kept buying the same phone. It would like wear out or the screen would go bad or something. He'd just go online and find the same one. A flip phone. For a decade, he had a flip phone. Insane. I had to give him my own I my old iPhone. I had to say, here, take this. Verizon, who we use or whatever, not that that matters. They all are trash. They had to say, hey... You can't do this anymore. You need a better phone. And I gave him an iPhone. He still has two phones. He still, for some reason, thinks he needs a flip phone and a smartphone. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a character. He's an interesting character. $34.99 free shipping. We did have two of these and one of them sold for like $19.99. But because that one is green, it sold for a premium electronics certain colors you can charge a premium because if they're gonna buy them they want it in the color they want and it goes for like game boy advance cell phones cam digital cameras pink is usually the the tops but 34.99 free shipping for a very outdated phone i love that next thing going out a5 is a monster mash vintage game piece right up here this thing is kind of cool I mean, push it once so you can get the vibe. Oh, stuck. There we go. <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't stuck every time, just the one time. But that is super cool. I saw that at a garage sale, just sitting on a, I don't know, a table full of random toys, or maybe it was in a box. I think I got it. Maybe, maybe it was free, but I didn't pay more than 25 cents, 10.79 free shipping. But I had no idea if this was worth anything at all. It's from 1987, so I, it's vintage. I picked it up and I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a shot. 
not amazing, but that's profits. I'm taking it. And I'm in it for the, the long game. So profits always matter. I mean, even though I'm making... I mean, that's not nothing. If I paid, even if I paid 50 cents after fees, all that, and then after, because it's free shipping, I'm probably making four or five bucks on that. I'm, I'm calling that a win. Unlike this next one. It is a Nintendo DS, the game Zubu, right down here. And for this game that I got to imagine is not that great because of the price, $7.69 free shipping. That will have to go first class. That will cost me about $4.50, somewhere in that range, depending on where it goes. Next thing going out on C4 is a vintage Johnson & Johnson Let's Go. See, one, two, three, four. Here we go. Backpack Bear. And what this is, is of course a stuffed bear. And then the backpack, there's supposed to be a little vinyl book that goes in it. That's mine from my childhood, but the book I didn't have. So I, but I listed it anyways. The buyer reached out to me, which this happens, I would say once a week, once every other week, where someone says, hey, do you ship to me? My response is always, if eBay allows you to purchase the item, then I ship to your area because I use the global shipping program. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I selected that at some point. I have no idea, but that does bring up a no whole nother thing. They, they were very happy. I think they were based in Taiwan, I think is what it was. Cause they specifically told me, I'm not going to bother looking it up, but $14.99 free shipping. Uh, they seem very uh, thankful and uh, excited to receive it. I hope they're not expecting a book in it. I was very clear in the listing, does not include the book. Even put it in the title, no vinyl book included. But that doesn't mean nothing because people don't read. But while I'm talking about international shipping, I don't know if it's sitting around here anywhere. Do, 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 do. It doesn't really matter. I got another one right here. I could, knives, this right here. I listed a, not this one, but I had listed a Dale Earnhardt Sr. commemorative knife in a tin. My bad. Well, Jen listed it. I forgot to inform her that you can't ship knives to every country. It's the it's the UK and one other. I think it's only two countries you can't. And so it pulled down the listing. The bummer thing about when that happens, because, oh yeah, my bad, I'll go and fix it. When eBay pulls one of your listings, that listing is gone. So it's not, I can't just go to it and sell similar or revise it and relist it. The pictures are gone. The listing is gone. At least the pictures are gone. The listing's still there. Kind of. I, remember, I don't remember exactly, but when I went through and was trying to do it, there was no way for me to get that listing to go live without just redoing the whole listing. And all I needed to do was take international shipping off of the knife, which is what I will do if I ever list knives going forward. Because I like simplicity. So I'm, I'm not going to go and make a special category for when I list knives, unless for some reason I bought out like a knife collection that I wanted to deal with that, then maybe. And then also maybe even this one, this is uh, my dad's. He's been wanting me to do some research on it for him. It is, uh, let's see where we got made in Norway and these made in Norway knives, it, the prices were all over the place. And then this ORS, I think is that's a person's initials. I don't think that has anything to do with the knife, but I just really, I don't know. I guess I, the one thing I didn't think of is I do have some like utensil knives, steak knives. So I will have to, but I have those on international shipping and eBay doesn't pull down those listings so I can send a steak knife, but I, maybe it's because it's a flip open. That's probably what it is. The, the Dale and her was a flip. I got to motion it for you. Um, was a flip open. So maybe that's where it falls into something. But for me going forward, I will just turn international shipping off on all my knives that we don't have to deal with it. Cause if you got to put a listing up twice, that's wasted time, wasted money, wasted effort. I'm not into that. Next up B3 is a vintage Schaefer's script fountain pen. I'll just grab the pen box and let's see. Okay. It's got like a flat top. Oh, here we go. This one right here. Uh, Schaefer, yeah. This pen right here, I have still been trying to get a hold of some more pens. I got some feelers out there. The one deal I was talking about before, the seller never reposted it and never went through it. The couple that are out there, they just, they want two, it's, there's not enough 
meat on the bone, as they say. So I can't really, I'm not going to pull the trigger just because I want more pens. I have to have the profits there. I'll wait. I just, I like dealing with pens. It's so easy. And some of these Schaefer's and Parker's and all these other name brand high-end pens, it's insane the kind of money you get. Uh, but for that one, $23.99 free shipping. And for me, that's still insane. It's a pen. It's a pen. And some, and I'm dealing in the like, low to maybe a couple of them were in that like mid range the high end on these Schaefer pens and Parkers and all this other stuff the gold tips and on and on and on all this specialty things it's it's into the thousands there's pens in the thousands of dollars <laughs> uh, I mean I like a, don't get me wrong I like a good pen I like a good G2 that's like a ten dollar pen that's for me that's insane I only have some because I've collect them over years from random places i haven't bought any i just i <laughs> the things people spend money on i'm glad they do because that's how i make a living uh next thing is a cardinal backgammon game on a5 a one two three four five see if i can sneak this out it does not feel promising because there's a weight in the way there we go and this is new in package i love this because this is the exact same one we had in my house growing up so i i have a bit of a fond connection to this backgammon set i was surprised at how little money it was worth and then it'd been sitting around for a while so i took a decent offer but not tons 15 dollars plus shipping i've gotten more than that for a used one before so i don't know maybe the gray isn't desirable who knows but exact one i had in my house growing up next thing going out b3 is two two and a half pound weights b one two three. Ooh, i feel them I was like, no, they're not in here, but I can feel them back here. Five pounds worth of weights. I'm strong. But these two Gold's Gym weights, I paid a dollar for the pair. I took an offer or I sent out, I countered an offer, $9.99 plus shipping. I don't go through the process of, if I know it's going to go flat rate, I don't, I don't set that up. I just put it regular cubic USPS shipping. And then if I get to send something flat rate, I get bonus money. So on this one, they paid $14.20. I will, unfortunately for everyone else shipping packages, I will put both of these in a USPS flat rate padded envelope and pay $8 and something. So I'll make a few bucks on the shipping, but I gave them, I think, $4 off on the price. So that makes up that difference. That means I get the full expected value for myself and they get a bargain works out for me and them but yeah I, I hate that i have to do it but it is what it is i still put bubble wrap around them sometimes i'll put a little bit of cardboard and that's just to protect it's not to protect those of course it's to protect the other packages out there because i do care i also have other packages i don't want that smashing around and beating up so usually i'll put maybe some medium bubble before i put it in there try to help out the other packages out there and let me tell you nobody else is doing that i, I can't say nobody but most people are not doing that. Most people do not care about your package. Next thing going out, this one's, <laughs> this one's kind of funny, but not funny at all. A3 is a his, Hisensi, I don't know how you even say that. His, Hisense, uh, A123, TV stand feet. Oh, okay, here we go, back here, in the bag. Good job, Jen. Making it easy on me, I like it. And I do need to take a, you know, a half a day or something and reorganize the shelves and put in some of these new these new baskets and stuff like that and and just clean it up a little bit. It's getting a bit hectic. I don't want to add more shelving. It inevitably probably will happen, but I, I think if I take an hour or two, reorganize, change some skew numbers, I think I think I can clear up a lot of space. But those right there, 1529 free shipping. Those would have been 10% off on a 10% off sale. Those are from our old TV in our living room. The reason that it's funny but not funny is our youngest, Thea, she broke our TV because she found out where the button is to turn it on and off and to do some functions that she, she couldn't figure out what, but she if she didn't like what was on TV, she was going to mess it up. So on and off all the time, button, 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 broke the TV. And so I said, hey, let's at least pull the legs off. Maybe, maybe they're worth something. And they were $15.29 free shipping, you know, <laughs> I love recouping $10 on a $600 TV. Love it. That makes it all better. <laughs> uh, 
But being who I am, I, I said, nah, I'm not buying another TV. We have three TVs in this house. Move the one from the kitchen that is like a... We went from a 55 in the living room down to a 19, I think it is. That's a, hey, is what it is. You broke it. That's the lesson to learn. But really, I'm just I'm waiting for Black Friday to get a TV deal. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna overpay for a, a home electronic. You can get TV super cheap Black Friday. So I'll just wait out. It's only another, sheesh, like two weeks away or something. Uh, next thing going out A4 WW Elite Kofi Kingston A1234. Oh, I don't have any here. I'll have to go to storage. That. Doesn't have to go until tomorrow, so I don't have to get it before I pack. $17 free shipping. I think I have five or six of them still left. I got them. Um, retail arbitrage from Walmart. I don't remember what I paid. I think it was I think it was under 10 bucks. They're not a terrible buy. Just it's been a long time. Two years, I've sold three out of maybe 10. That's a that's a long time to wait around for such little profits. That's locking up a lot of money for not a lot of profits. I that's why retail arbitrage for me is almost done. Still I check because every once in a while you'll find something, but it's got to be real good. If I dealt with Amazon, I would do retail arbitrage all the time, but I don't. I think the first one I sold was 24.99 plus shipping. So when I first bought them, it was a better buy, but Anytime something gets discounted at Walmart, at your Walmart, it's discounted at my Walmart, somebody else's Walmart. That's just kind of how it works out. So you have about a week and then the market's flooded and then you got to drop your price. Next up, A3, Looney Tunes Tweety Bird Christmas Ornament. A123, is that what I said? A3? Man, I can't find anything today. A3, Looney Tunes Tweety Bird Christmas Ornament. I looked right at it and then looked away. Maybe open your eyes, Shrew. Maybe that'll help. Sitting right up there waiting for you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it doesn't look right. But there, it's a Tweety Bird uh, original price, $4.94 from 2000. Can't believe 2000 is vintage. That's insane. Eleven ninety nine dollars free shipping. No clue where I got that. Not even a little bit. I can't imagine I paid more than maybe... 50 cents for it. Um, next up is a game, Call of Duty Finest Hour for, I think, PlayStation 2. I should probably, you know, go ahead and just read the whole thing so I know what I'm looking for, because it's clearly not PlayStation 2. It is Xbox, Call of Duty Finest Hour for regular Xbox, original Xbox. And for that item, 1079 free shipping. Next thing going out today, note from buyer. Thanks for the discount offer. You're welcome, buyer. It is A3 Vintage Brass Victorian Hands. A3. This is a popular shelf today. Right here. A3. It's like a note clip type thing. Made of brass. And as you see it, opens and closes. I paid $2 for that at a garage sale. Uh, maybe a dollar even. No, actually, I think the tag's right on here. $2. I paid $2 for that at a garage sale. $24.99 free shipping. I've been loving brass. Unbreakable. I mean, technically, yeah, big old candelabra. I could probably break it, but just it's it's so easy to deal with. I love it. And for the most part, people don't want it. They want it to look aged. They want it to look antique. So if it's looks old and dirty, you don't gotta you don't gotta shine it, that's for sure. So I love it. I just Love it. Actually, the, the lady I bought that from, she's a picker. I think she does a little resale, but I'm not positive on that. Um, but she's she is at the resale shops every single day. I think she's mostly a collector, glassware. So her garage sale, I was trying to get people to go to it because it's just beautiful glassware. Nothing I can make a profit on. She's aware what all of her stuff's worth. She's been doing it a long time. I think she's pretty old. I wouldn't want to take a guess, but over 70. But I, I have no idea, but she's she's up there. But beautiful stuff if you're buying it for your home. Still a good price if you're buying it for yourself. For me, nothing there I wanted to buy, but I was like, I got to buy something. There's nobody else in this garage sale. She looks lonely in this garage. And I picked up this brass hands for two bucks. So even at a sale where I'm looking around going, there is nothing, nothing here anybody's going to make any money off of. 
still found something I can make money off of. $24.99 from two bucks. Free shipping, of course. Next up, B3D16. That is right here in B3D16. And this is hard to see, kind of, but this is a Ike Eisenhower pin from 1956. From, well, I guess I don't, I could read it off of here instead. No, what does that say there? Ulite, maybe? I don't know. It said the name on there, and I don't think that's in the listing. For that Ike Eisenhower 56 pin, $20.99 free shipping. And I think I got that with big bag of pins I got from the that estate sale, but I'm not positive on that. It would have been less than a dollar I paid for it, for sure. Yeah, and like I said, a few more orders that could go out today, but I'm just going to wait till Wednesday on those. But before I sign off, let's get back to... To the and the tip of the day today is be resourceful. And what I mean is you will find items in your daily routine like this. This is the inside tube of a roll of bubble wrap. Or like this is the inside tube of a roll of tape. I have found so many uses for these two items. And... I wouldn't save these if I was going to, maybe if you, you wanted to, but this, if you were going to have one, you know, I, oh, I happen to have one of these, maybe, but I, I go through these on a regular basis. I needed to find a use for them almost. I've taken these, I've shipped stuff in them, just put a piece of paper on both ends and tape them off. Great, great item. I actually, we listed some pennants today. Uh, I will probably... Uh, roll them and put them in these to ship them. That's probably something I'm going to do. You can tape them together for a poster tube, all that kind of stuff. I use these a lot as void fill. I always make sure to cut the extra tape off so it doesn't look... You know, some people are still going to complain either way. People like to find things to complain about. But say, let me get a box so you can kind of demonstrate. Say I'm shipping an item. This phone right here. And I've bubble wrapped it and it's good. I just don't want it to shift around in the box. I also, I could resize the box, but I don't need to because the poundage isn't going to go over that next pound. And the size of the box is not going to move me up into cubic dimensions of any kind. It's not going to affect anything. I just need to fill that void. A good thing to use is these. They don't weigh a lot and they give you a very solid surface. So let me go ahead and grab four of them. And you'll see for very little weight, now imagine this is bubble wrapped, of course, but for very little added weight, I have made this box smaller just by using these cardboard spacers. I use these ones often uh, when shipping VCRs, DVD players, things like that, because it's it's easy to resize a box in one direction. It's hard to resize it in two directions. So sometimes, like, okay, it's perfect this way. Oh, well, I, I, now I still just have this extra space here. But it doesn't affect the shipping cost. I just need something in there. And what led me to that is that the my other option is to fill that with... Let's not throw my phone away. Is to fill that with packing paper. That costs me money. To fill it with bubble wrap. That costs me money. These... It's a, uh, what would they call that? It's a byproduct of the business I already run. I continuously have these over and over and over and over and over again. I just pile them up till I need them. Like I said, I've shipped in them. I've used them for packing. I've used them for spacers in in my card boxes for my, my, my personal card collection. I've used them for spacers because once, you know, if your box, you got a long box, if you know what that is. I have one, I think, around here. Maybe not. But... For card collectors, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you have one of those boxes, sometimes if there's too big of a space, your cards will flop around and that's not good. You don't want them to move. Those are perfect. You can space them in there, of course, in three inch increments or whatever it is, but many, many uses. And I'm not talking specifically that. That's just one I've found. If there's something in your own life, that's actually a good way to say it, is a byproduct of the things you already do, try to find a use for it. You'll be you could probably be pleasantly surprised at how many things you find. Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other.